Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and this week I am super excited to share with you that I have 10 brand new stencil and mask designs with Joggles.com and they are launching and available for purchase today, August 13th. I am excited to share with you that they are in a theme of Gustav Klimt inspired patterns. And any of you who know me know that Klimt has always been my muse. So it's been very difficult for me to keep this whole design process and manufacturing under wraps and a secret until they were available for purchase because it's been super exciting to work on these with Barb from Joggles. So without any further ado, let's go check out all 10 of the new designs that are available today. Welcome back. Today is the big reveal of my next set of stencils and masks for joggles.com and they are the Klimt inspired collection. There are 10 stencils and masks and they are all inspired by the artist Gustav Klimt, who is one of my, if not my, all-time favorite artist. Um, I guess you would say he is my all-time favorite artist because this is the second uh, tattoo that I have of him on me. So he has inspired me in my own art and in my life in many ways, and I also find many other artists love and enjoy him as well. So this collection of stencils was sort of natural in its evolution, and... Um, I've got 10 of them. I just want to go through them and reveal them and show you some of the work that I've done with them today. And then I'm going to demonstrate um, one of my favorite uh, techniques because I've done many, many things in here. So you can look forward to future tutorial tidbits with more work with the stencils. But today I want to reveal, show some samples and, um, and give you one technique. So the first, uh, the first one, uh, first of all, let me talk about the three, the three types of formats that we have. We have a stencil, we have a mask, and we have what's called a framed mask, okay? So this one is a framed mask because it has a frame around it, it has a square, but it's a mask because the plastic, the mylar, itself forms the pattern. So the pattern is not formed by the negative spaces, the pattern is formed by the mylar, by the by the positive, and that is what makes it a mask. So this one, and I have to look at my cheat sheet because I haven't had these long enough to, I only got them yesterday. So this one's called Gustav and Emily, and this is a framed mask. Um, so real quick, I'll show you the other, the other format. Um, this is um, rectangle motif, and this is also a mask. This has a frame edge on each end, but it has a free form edge. And again, the pattern is formed by the mylar, the positive image of the mylar. So the tree of life is also a framed mask. And these are my prototypes. So I do believe that we're probably going to put a little connector right here to keep this from being so floppy because the problem with them when they're floppy is that they get tangled, especially the spirals. So I've been playing with the um, prototypes today. And one of the things that uh, changes that I'm going to suggest we make in the next run is to connect some of these um, spirals. So uh, in the interest of not having them tangle, I wanted to mentioned that I use Duralar. It's in a pad um, and it's a nine by 12 and they're clear sheets basically of plastic. And I put the Duralar sheets from this pad. I back them up onto the masks and I use a hanging system where I hang them on um, do metal dowels. And that is another video that you can see here on my YouTube. And I hang them on the dowels. I take these little hooks um, right here and I hook, I clip the mask to the Duralar and then the little hook hangs it on the dowel. And then that way they can overlap with each other slightly because the plastic in between them keeps them from tangling. This is super helpful. And the reason why I use the Duralar plastic 
is so that I can see them. I can, I am hanging them and I can see them because I can see through the plastic. So even if they're overlapping each other on the hanging system, they're easy to see. And that is real important because if you don't see it, you're not going to use it. So that's my hanging system. And I, again, that look for that video here on my YouTube channel. That is another, another tutorial tidbit. So the, um, the Duralar and the clips, um, are all on my Amazon shopping page. That link is in your upper right-hand corner. As always, all of the products that I use in these videos is on the Amazon list, unless they're specific to another site. So today we're talking about these stencils and mask designs, which will be available on Friday, August 13th at 7.30 AM Eastern time on joggles.com website. Okay, so you're going to go to joggles.com on Friday the 13th at 7.30 in the morning Eastern time to purchase these designs if you're interested. Okay, so that's another framed mask. I'm going to show you, um, looks like we have a lot of framed masks. Um, Sensuous Spirals is another framed mask because it's got the border, but the image is positive. And so let me just find you a stencil so you can see the difference. So the leaves is a stencil. It's a stencil because, well, it's kind of a double because the holes, the spaces form the pattern. The spaces form the triangles, but also it's kind of a double because the uh, mylar also forms the triangles. So it could be considered a stencil or a mask. But generally when the holes, the negative space form the pattern, that's when it's a stencil. When the mylar the positive space forms the pattern, that's when it's a mask. And when it has a border, it's just because it needs something to hold it all together because every layer is not connected. So that should um, help to explain the difference between stencils and masks. I get that question a lot. Um, let's see if I can keep all this stuff in order. Oh yeah, yeah, I think I got myself out of order. Anyway, okay. So, so you've now seen Tree of Life. This is based on, uh, Klimt did a, um, several trees like this with the swirls and the, and his motif of the triangles and the little coffee beans and the spirals. Um, but he also did a beautiful tree of life, but he uses this style and these trees in other of his paintings and his work. So the, uh, the piece that I did from the tree of life, this is actually a navy bluish uh, Payne's gray over Naples yellow. And you can see a very faint uh, pattern in the Naples yellow, and that is a layering stencil. Uh, I have two uh, stencils masks in this group that I designed specifically to be layered. One of them is the leaves, the triangles that I just showed you, and the other is the rectangle motif. And we'll get to that. That's um, this one. I design um, these to be layered with the more complex uh, other stencils and masks. And that way you get this wonderful patterning. So I'm always gonna design a couple that are meant to be layered. And in this set, it is the rectangle motif and the leaves, the leaves and the rectangle motif that are meant to be layered with some, with any or all of the others. So that is um, the tree of life in a positive print. And then here is the tree of life in a ghost print that is printed on green. So I took the ghost print of this Payne's gray color that was left behind on the plate and transferred it onto a solid green sheet. So some nice, rich, deep, dark colors here and two different effects. So the ghost print is more painterly and soft. And the first initial print is more graphic and hard edged. Both of them are interesting and unique, but those are the two different types of prints that you would get from this framed mask. So that's the, um, that's the tree of life nine by 12 framed mask. The next one is this one is the, um, Gustav and Emily and it is the one that I used to create this image. And this is the positive image. This is um, a Van Dyke brown over a Naples yellow. And the, the print picked up some green, probably from that Tree of Life print. So as you know, with the gel print, the gel plate, you get this interesting artifacts from previous prints. So that's where the green came from. But that's what this one looks like printed straight forward. So that is Gustav and Emily. Now these are going to be available as a set 
Joggles will sell them as a one purchase price point set. So you can get all of them. I do anticipate that some of these are going to sell out. Um, last time with the Peacock stencil set, they did sell out. So if you are have your heart set on um, getting them, you should have been at Joggles at 7.30 in the morning. I'm going to have to publish this video early so that you have the heads up. All right. So this is the uh, rectangle motif and another straightforward print with Van Dyke Brown and... Naples yellow. I focus a lot on yellow and gold in these because of course it's clipped. So this is again, as I said, the layering stencil. So a mask. So I'm going to set that aside for my demonstration. Sensuous spirals. This one is called sensuous spirals. And again, same color combination, Naples yellow and Van Dyke brown. And this is the, um, the, the, the mask again, the, the mylar, the plastic uh, forms the pattern more so than the negative spaces. So I did the, also this one in a second color combo. This is teal with magenta. So uh, it doesn't always have to be gold. You can certainly do them in all kinds of different color combos. I love the teal with the magenta of the sensuous spirals framed mask. Uh, the next one that I want to show you is called cubes. Klimt did a lot of squares, um, so I did sort of rounded edged cubes with um, patterns in the middle uh, inspired. And this uh, first one that I did is um, on deli paper, and the color that's behind it is sort of a golden orange. Um, and then I did a, a print over the top with magenta. So actually what's behind it was a brayer cleanup sheet. I was rolling my brayer off on the other side to clean up the brayer. And when I had that, um, it looked like it would be great base layer. So I cleaned my brayer roll the extra paint off of my brayer on a full size sheet sometimes so that I can then use that as a base for the cubes mask. Now this is a nice example of the actual freeform mask without a frame. So you get this lovely edge shape that is not square. It's not squared in like a frame because every single one of these shapes touch each other. They're connected to each other so they don't need the frame. So that's a nice example of a mask without a frame for the cubes. I also did cubes in um, Van Dyke Brown with metallic, uh, I believe this is bronze. I thought the bronze would be interesting. So this has got a lovely metallic feel to it and it's over the Van Dyke Brown. The next one is called uh, Spiral Repeat. And this is a combination of Klimt's favorite spirals. Here's a little tangle. Spirals are just tangly no matter how you how you deal with them. Um, again, this is why I don't stack the stencils and masks on top of each other because they will tangle not only with themselves, but with the one that they're stacked on top of. So that mylar in between really works well. Even if you don't have a hanging system and you put them in a drawer, having the mylar in between them just makes them easier to see. So this is what I call his coffee bean motif. It looks like a coffee bean to me. And he did that in a lot of his patterning. So I combined the coffee bean with the double e ended spiral. So he did this a lot too. The spiral that goes one way comes around and does the other. So this is a combination of the coffee bean and the double ended spiral. And this is called spiral repeat. And for this one, I got a little complex in this print. So basically what's going on underneath this print is the layering stencil of the rectangle motif. And it's in orange and also red. And then I went on top of that multi-layered print with the Van Dyke Brown and the spiral repeat mask. So when you add the dark color to the top, what shows through are all the um, colors from underneath. So this is a really nice, complex, layered print. And I am showing you many of these very straightforward um, as in one pr single print. Uh, but I always layer, 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 layer my prints. But I want, I'm showing you single prints like this so that you can clearly see the mask pattern. But when I make um, paper for collage, I do a lot of layering. So, uh, um, so here's the difference. Here's the, and this is lovely too. So this is, a, this is uh, the um, bronze on phthalo teal or phthalo turquoise 
uh, single print, and then this is the layered, the layered effect. Okay, so that's spiral repeat. The next one is, what is this one called? Nouveau. This one is called Nouveau for Klimt having been a pioneer of the Art Nouveau movement in Vienna in the late 1890s, early 1900s. So this is called Nouveau, and I um, used that one to create a multi-layer brown on uh, brown, Van Dyke brown that goes over a lighter brown with bronze um, print. So this has got multi-layers in the underneath and then the Van Dyke brown over the top. And then I did it, this lovely version of it with gold metallic on top of the uh, rectangle motif. And the rectangle motif is underneath. You can see the, the stripe lines of the rectangle motif mask. And that is in uh, light purple and darker purple. And then I went over the top of it with the gold metallic. And the lovely thing about metallic is it's completely opaque. So the lovely pattern shows through only, the purple area shows through only in the pattern. Um, and the, the gold blocks the rest of it out. So that is... Um, Nouveau, and that might be the one that I would like to demonstrate for you. The next one is the leaves, which is um, the triangles, very common in a lot of Klimt's um, patterning work. He did these as leaves on trees or leaves on vines, the uh, triangles. And this one is straightforward in green metallic. And I mix the gold with the green turquoise thalo, and also the gold layer itself. So when you're doing um, your Klimt-inspired papers, always, always know that you can blend gold metallic in with other colors and give every other color in your repertoire a golden, shimmery, metallic feel because that's what is happening here. I added gold to the turquoise thalo to give myself this metallic in both colors so that's a that's the uh, ghost print of the leaves mask and here is the as a double layer of the straightforward print so this is naples yellow with a little bit darker yellow and then uh, a permanent green so this is two layers of the leaves um, mask and what i do is i flip it so the triangles are going one way in the green and the other way in the yellow. So when I repeat a stencil or a mask over itself, I flip the direction so that we get this interesting uh, motif that's not lining up with the triangles. So some are going this way and some are going that way. So that is the, the um, leaves mask. The next one is... This one is called Vienna, and that is um, where Klimt uh, was from and did all of his work and experienced his success in Vienna, Austria. So this one is called Vienna. This is sort of a combination of a bunch of different motifs in a kind of a fun pattern. And this one, I did a multiplied layer um, with uh, what's underneath there? It's hard to tell. I think it's the leaves. I think it's the orange with the red with the leaves, the triangles, and then a double print of um, this Vienna on top. So the first one was Naples yellow, and then I had it going in the same direction, but it doesn't perfectly line up. So you almost see like a drop shadow effect. So the Naples yellow print, and then this dark purple on top of that. So this is a lovely example of the layering, layering, layering. And I will demonstrate that for you. And this is the first, this is the straightforward print, just so that you can see exactly what the, um, what this mask looks like, the Vienna mask and the pattern that it gives. And last but not least, this one is called Mirror Mirror. Um, it kind of reminded me of uh, Disney's uh, Mirror shape. I don't know why when I was done with it, it sort of gave me that feel. So this is called Mirror Mirror. This is a free form mask, so it does not have a frame. So it has the wonderful edge that is not squared off like a stencil or a framed mask would be. So that gives you some great edges. And with this one, 
Here's the, uh, the basically the straightforward print. Again, this was another brayer cleanup sheet. So I cleaned my brayer off in dark blue on this sheet and then not dark blue, uh, phthalo blue green shade. And then I went over it with teal. And again, teal is opaque. So you only see the phthalo blue through the, um, pattern. So this is on deli paper. I love the way that that layers because you can see through it. And that is the mirror, mirror mask. And the next um, one with lovely layers that I did with this one, I might have to demonstrate this one for you. This is over the, again, it is layered with the leaves. So you can see the triangles that are showing through. It's uh, the leaves in shifted direction in light blue and dark blue over a solid magenta sheet and then gold with the mirror mirror on top, allowing that wonderful layering to show through the spaces in the mask. So we, I think that that one is also pretty uh, similar to this one where in the pattern of the lower layer is showing through the metallic um, mask. And with that nice freeform edge mask, you don't get a squared edge. You get these lovely shapes um, that are not squared off by a border or being a stencil. So, Let's go with mirror, mirror, and let's recreate. I'll show you how I did this print. So let's, um, and also know that it is done with the layering um, leaves mask, but it also could be done with the other layering um, rectangular motif, because that's what this one is done with. So leaves and rectangular motif are definitely layering. Okay, so let's get the leaves. we can find it. Here we go. So we're going to use the leaves and the mirror mirror, and I'm going to recreate as best I can this print, because I think this is pretty, this has got some pretty great things going on. So I am going to be using, um, my favorite pad of rice paper. And that is the, um, the Sumi E sketch paper. It is um, rice paper, so it glues down and collage beautifully. It is a thicker rice paper than most. It is very durable, sturdy and strong. So when it sticks to this plate and you pull it off, it is not gonna tear because it is very thick, sturdy and strong and durable. It has one side that is sized, so it's very smooth. And what that means is that smooth side just about pulls every bit of paint off the plate. You can use it to clean the plate with the last print before you put your tools away. And um, it is nine by 12. It is a nine by 12 pad. So what I have come to really appreciate is my Dina Wakely 9 by 11 gel plate. And that is, um, it's made by gel press, but it's, um, it's by Dina Weekly. And because it is 9 by 11, it is just about going to cover this whole sheet of rice paper. So when you buy this pad and you use the eight by 10 plate, you have a good couple of inches of waste of white paper. So we're going to be using the plate that, that, um, really takes advantage of the, uh, size of the sheet of my favorite rice paper. So the first thing that we're going to do is the layer of magenta. So I've got golden fluid acrylics, quinacridone magenta. There's not a lot left in here, but I think we've got enough for one print. I'm going to roll that out with my very fancy brayer. This is um, not what I normally uh, speak to you of, the speedball brayer. This is a brayer that I got from Vermont Art Supply, and it is very expensive, but it is heavy with a wood handle, and it just glides beautifully. Um, so anyway, it is my Cadillac brayer. Only the best for you. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, generally I would roll this off onto that cleanup sheet that I showed you I had been using for other prints. So here's a deli paper and I'm just gonna roll this off. I'm gonna roll the color off and use that for a base layer for a future print. So I'm just gonna roll it off the best I can. It's very hot out here and I get most of the paint off but the rest of it will just dry by the time we spread another color. Speaking of drying, we need to print this. 
So we're gonna take the rice paper with the smooth side down on the plate, and we're gonna line it up as best we can so we can get, get the full impression. And this is the Conacridone Magenta Golden Fluid Acrylic. So now you're gonna see, let's just make sure we get all corners. So we're gonna lift that up. You're gonna see how this rice paper just pulls off every bit of paint really, except for the stuff around the edges that's sort of caked on, but everything else is transferred. And this has picked up some artifacts of like some color that was left over on the plate, um, which is lovely. So the next step then is to make a medium or a darker blue. So I'm trying to um, remember the colors I use. So I'm gonna use Thalo Blue Green Shade. So I'm gonna spread that out and roll it. You want a nice thin layer, not drippy and, and going over the sides. But if your paint is drying too fast or your paper is sticking to the plate or you roll your brayer and it's removing the paint, then you need to move faster and use more paint. Because in the summer when it's hot and there's fans and air conditioning or you're out in the garage like I am, you need to uh, move faster and use a thicker layer of paint. So here again is my cleanup sheet. Set that aside. Put out my triangle and put that over my prepared magenta sheet. You're gonna use your fingertips and the heels of the palm of your hand to press this very malleable rice paper, which is why I love it. It'll go down in between all the spaces in all these intricate patterns without any resistance. I love old book pages, but they're a little bit more rigid and they're sometimes less likely to get all the detail in the prints that this rice paper does because this will really go down into all those little spaces. So before you dismount it, you wanna make sure you have a good print that you don't have a lot of paint left behind. And you can see that by checking and then giving it an extra rub if you do have paint left behind. And there's our first layer. Now we're gonna have a ghost print on here, but um, just going to grab another piece of deli paper to take that off the plate and save it for a future print. So the ghost print, I'm just gonna clean it off onto this deli paper, or I could transfer it onto another light colored solid, but I'm just cleaning it so we can get to our, our next print. Okay, so our next print is going to be this uh, same color, but we need to lighten it up a little bit. So I'm going to use the Thalo Blue Green Shade and I'm going to add a little bit of teal to it. Now I don't wanna add too much teal because teal is opaque. We can't see anything through this teal and we don't wanna block out everything uh, on the that we've already printed. So I'm just gonna use a few drops of it and spread it out with the, um, with the Thalo Blue so that it is not opaque as much as it's just gonna lighten this blue. So it's gonna give me this nice sort of periwinkle lighter blue. And I'm going to uh, roll that out onto this paper. We're getting kind of a really interesting cleanup sheet there. And then I'm going to put this down and make sure that I switch directions. So it looks like that was going this way. I think, no, I think I'm good this way. It's a little tricky, but I wanna flip the direction so that the triangles, that the leaf motif is um, a little bit more interesting than if it lines up with itself. So again, pressing through with the paper. and getting the second print of the blues going in the opposite direction. That, they could have been a little bit lighter, but uh, I don't want it to be too busy under here, so th that'll be fine. So there's my ghost print again. Um, I'm just gonna grab this deli paper and flip it and clean that off. And then these cleanup sheets, like the Brayer cleanup sheet and this, will be a great base layer for another print. So we've got a little blue left on here that didn't come off on the deli paper. Um, so I'm just gonna flip the plate over for now. And I'm going to do my gold, iridescent bright gold fine fluid acrylic. Um, again, I have all the paints and all the products um, that come from Amazon on my Amazon shopping list. And then the um, stencils and the Dina Wakely gel plate 
are available at Joggles. So we're going to now, I'm gonna grab the speedball brayer uh, because it doesn't have blue paint on it. And I'm gonna roll out the, um, the gold. Now it is really nice to have two brayers because if I had any bit of wet on this blue, it would make that gold green. So I do, um, I am using a second brayer. So now we're going to put the mirror mirror mask and we're gonna take this sheet and print. So what we did was we created a multi-patterned layered base layer and now we're going over this with gold and it is gonna block out that pattern everywhere except for where the mask pattern is. And I didn't get, oh yeah, there we go. I was gonna say, I didn't get quite as heavy coverage on the gold, but you know what? I think it, this one is actually bronze. See the difference? This is a little bit more yellow and this is a little bit more green. So this was bronze and this one is gold metallic. So you can see that that beautiful patterning of the lower layer with the multiplying stencils of the leaves pattern is really giving us something wonderful to show through here. So, and then I've got this ghost print under here. So I'm going to lift that up and I'm just going to quick transfer that to this sprayer cleanup sheet. And it's patterned on my cleanup sheet. So that is your official tour of my brand new Central and Mass collection with Joggles.com that is available on August 13th, Friday. That's today. And um, thanks for being here and happy Friday.